Happy New Year to all of you. Yeah. Thank you. Welcome to our first service of 2022. Um, it is really good to be together today and pray that not just today, but this year, we will feel the presence of God very much with us. We don't, we're not going to do our normal lighting of the Catherine candle, and, uh, um, the Christ candle, because we don't have the music and things like that. But I'm just going to light the candle um, as, a, as a prayer that God, that God's presence becomes visible amongst us. Let us pray. Lord our God, as we come into the service of worship, it is our humble request that we will see your glory in all its splendor. And seeing your glory in all its splendor, that we will place ourselves before you, that you may do the work that you need to do in us. Bless the service we pray in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen. We're going to sing today. Is the sound coming okay? Yeah. We're going to sing today the um, karaoke style. Um, the speaker is reasonably loud, but not maybe loud enough so that you can sing full voice and still hear. So I'll give you permission not to sing full voice today. Um, the first song is a very special song to me. I really enjoy the song. It's Jabulani Africa. Um, I don't think actually one can stand still <laughs> and not sing this song. I, don't, I can't understand how one cannot move to the beat um, as good African people do move to the beat. Um, there's a lot of repetition of Jabulani, Jabulani, Africa. Um, that's so that it sinks in. Don't get irritated with repetition. And the way that, that uh, Jabulani, Africa works is the first sentence, Jabulani, Jabulani, Africa, is a command to us. And the response is where actually we sing. So you, you're not supposed to, in a sense, sing the first bit. You're supposed to respond to the request that we rejoice. Um, I hope that makes sense. Um, but if you sing with the first verse, that's okay. With the first line. Okay, so let's sing together.
Let us turn to God in prayer. Sing for joy. Rejoice in the Lord always. Why should we rejoice? We rejoice, Lord, because you are with us. We let that sink in. You are with us. As we enter into this year, there's so much we don't know. We don't know what's going to be our experiences through the year. But we rejoice because what we do know is that you are with us. It is your presence that gives us reason to rejoice. Reason to rejoice in the good things that we experience. But also reason to rejoice when things go wrong, when things become difficult, when we face challenges of various types, when we are sad, when we are suffering, when we feel ourselves pushed aside. Even in these times, we can rejoice because you are with us. You are with us to guide us, to hold us, to strengthen us, and to bring us through to the other side. And so we rejoice. Always. We go into this year rejoicing, for you are with us. And as we come to you this year, what is our request? What is it we ask of you? Our very deepest desire, maybe, is for a year of good things. An easy year. A year in which we experience the best that a year can offer. But Lord, we know that it would be it would be unwise to ask for that. It would be unwise to want a year that's easy. For an easy year would not grow us. An easy year will leave us in our sinfulness. An easy year would rob us of opportunities. 
to get involved. And so, Lord, we do not ask for an easy year. We ask that you do a work in our lives. That you put an axe to the root of the sin that still clings in our lives. That you set fire to burn away the, the rubbish. We ask that you that you give us strength, not the kind of strength that can only cope with small challenges, but the kind of strength that can face the worst that may come our way. And we know that we can only build up that strength by facing the challenges we do face. We ask that you will grow our strength. And we ask that you grow our knowledge, our understanding of who you are, our understanding of our place. That you stretch us. That you take us out of those comfortable zones that we have sometimes fallen into. And Reveal yourself to us in ways that will surprise us. And reveal things to us about ourselves that we were not aware of before. Stretch us. We ask that you use us. Use us to, to let your will be done on earth as it is done in heaven. Use us in those times where the darkness seems to be at its worst, to bring your light. Use us for those people who have given up and are in despair, that they may have hope. Use us. Use us to be instruments of peace. Use us to be those who build bridges, who restore relationships that are broken. So our request of you at the beginning of this year, therefore, is not for a year of comfort and ease, but a year of growth, of challenge, of being relevant. May we know 
your presence. May we make your presence known. We ask in the precious name of Jesus. Let us pray together the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Thank you very much. Um, we're going to listen to the scriptures. Our first reading, um, Sandra's reading for us, from um, the prophet of Jeremiah. Israel's return home. The Lord says, Sing with joy for Israel, the greatest of the nations. Sing your song of praise. The Lord has saved his people. He has rescued all who are left. I will bring them from the north and gather them from the ends of the earth. The blind and the lame will come with them, pregnant women and those about to give birth. They will come back a great nation. My people will return weeping, praying as I lead them back. I will guide them to streams of water on a smooth road where they will not stumble. I am, the, I am like a father to Israel, and Ephraim is my eldest son. The Lord says, Nations, listen to me and proclaim my words on the far-off shores. I scattered my people, but I will gather them and guard them as a shepherd guards his flock. I have set Israel's people free and have saved them from a mighty nation. They will come and sing for joy on Mount Zion and be, be delighted with my gifts. Gifts of corn and wine and olive oil, gifts of sheep and cattle. They will be like a well-watered garden they will have everything they need. Then the girls will dance and be happy, and men, old and young, will rejoice. I will comfort them and turn their mourning into joy, their sorrow into gladness. I will fill the priests with the richest food and satisfy all the needs of my people. I, the Lord, have spoken. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks. 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 Our Gospel lesson comes from the Gospel of John, chapter 1, and I read from verse 1 through to verse 18. In the beginning, the Word already existed. The Word was with God, and the Word was God. From the very beginning, the Word was with God. Through Him, God made all things. Not one thing in all creation was made without Him. The Word was the source of life. And this life brought light to humanity. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has never put it out. God sent his messenger, a man named John, who came to tell people about the light, so that all 
should hear the message and believe. He himself was not the light. He came to tell about the light. This was the real light. The light that comes into the world and shines on everyone. The word was in the world. And though God made the world through him, yet the world did not recognize him. He came to his own country, but his own people did not receive him. Some, however, did receive him and believed in him. And so he gave them the right to become God's children. They did not become God's children by natural means, that is, by being born as children of a human father. God himself was their father. The Word became a human being, and full of grace and truth, lived among us. We saw his glory, the glory which he received as the Father's only Son. John spoke about it. He cried out, this is the one I was talking about when I said, he comes after me, but he is greater than I am, because he existed before I was born. Out of the fullness of his grace, he has blessed us all, giving us one blessing after another. God gave the law through Moses, but grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has seen God, the only Son who is the same as God and is at the Father's side, he has made him known. This is the word of God. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Going to do another song. This is not a song that I think you'll be able to sing with because it's, it's very new to you. You're welcome to try and sing with if you want. Um, but it's just a song about Jesus. A song that basically tells some of the story about Jesus. And um, I'm, I'm asking that we just capture um, the message that comes through this song. So you can remain seated if you like, um, don't have to stand, um, if you want to try and join in the singing you're welcome, otherwise just observe and let the song speak to you.
the word became a human being and full of grace and truth lived among us. On YouTube there is a series called The Chosen. It is a series of episodes going through the life of Jesus. It is brilliant. I really highly recommend it to you. If you've not yet seen it, all you do is on YouTube, you just type in The Chosen and it's available to you for free. Yeah. Um, I'm still busy going through it. I've seen season one. I'm busy with season two and it's really, really special. Um, as with all of these shows that try and portray Jesus, one also, one has to just realize that it is not, it doesn't have all the facts that we find in Scripture. And it adds certain things to make the story come alive. So, trust your scriptures, in a sense more than trust the movie, the film, the series. But it does such a good job. It does such a good job of showing, for instance, the, the disciples. Peter is this really tough guy, as one could imagine he might have been as a fisherman. Um, whereas Matthew, for instance, is like a little compulsive, obsessive guy that's worried about germs and worried about um, his appearance and, um, you know, and each of the characters is portrayed so, so well. And their emotions and their struggles and their doubts and, and their reactions are just so well done. I really want to recommend that you watch. But the person that I think played the role the best is the person that plays Jesus. He just captures for me so much of who Jesus is. He, he has this way of looking that shows love, that shows compassion, that shows care. So often in the show, he says nothing, just looks, just looks. And in his look alone, the message is conveyed. You are cared for. You are special. You are loved. I recommend the show to you. Not just because it's a good show and a good use of your time and effort. And to point out to you that if you don't take the time and effort, the show will still exist, but you'll miss out on it. I also use this as an almost an illustration of what it means when it says the Word became a human being and full of grace and truth lived among us. The writer of the series, The Chosen, wrote words. They were words to start with. 
The word said what should be done, and the word said what should be said. And then people were chosen to play the role. And those people had to take that role and own it and become the person in the role. And in a, in a helpful way, I think, that's exactly what the life of Jesus is for us. You see, God is a God of speaking. God speaks. And you find the speaking of God throughout the Bible. In the beginning, it says, God said. You know? God spoke. God said. Right at the end, the very last words, God speaks. And in between, you will read in the Bible, God speaks. There are others that speak in the Bible too. Not just God's words. You will see that like in any play, in any um, story, there are different characters. You know, so you have David, Abraham, you have Mary, you have Paul, you have, you have all kinds of people that speak as well, but they come and go. Their, their words are support words for the main word, which is the word of God. And we have recorded in our scriptures, in our Bible, so much of what God says. And what God says, we can read in scripture as being full of grace and truth. We love the grace part a little bit more than the truth part. <laughs> we like it when God speaks and things are created. We like it when God speaks and, <clears throat> and we are called to Him. We like it when God speaks and we are restored and forgiven. We like it when God speaks and we are made to feel special. We like it when God's grace is spoken. But we don't always like it too much when God speaks truth. When God says you've done wrong. When God says this is what I want you to do. When God says, I ask you to do something you don't even think yourself you cannot do. When God speaks truth, we sometimes find it difficult to accept. But God does speak truth as well as grace. God's word is full of the truths and full of the graces of all that God wants to do for us. And it is this word of God, this word of grace and truth that became, in the good news it says, became human. But the better word would probably be became flesh. It became real among us in Jesus. Jesus lived out the word of God. 
And you can see that in Jesus because Jesus is full of grace and truth. He said all those creative things, all those, his healing miracles for instance, or his miracles as a whole, he just, he speaks and things happen. Okay? And he calls, he says, follow me, be with me. And he, he tells people that I don't condemn you. And he tells people all kinds of, of gracious, gracious things. His words, his life is full of grace. But his life is also full of truth. Some of the things Jesus says are quite hard to listen to. He tells us when we are wrong. He tells us what we should do. He instructs us. And his instructions often go against what you would normally be doing. He instructs some very difficult things for us to do. Like forgive and 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 carry on forgiving. Do good to those who do you harm. Bless those who curse you. Doesn't sound too nice, eh? Not what he really wants to do. And it tells us what needs to happen if we are to please God. Because you deny yourself. Deny yourself. Embrace Him. Let Him be all that's important in your life. Some truths we do not always want to hear. But Jesus lives it out. He brings flesh to what God has always been saying. And that, that word becomes flesh, became word again. Because it's written for us. It's written for us. So we don't have Jesus to see. But we have the words about the word become flesh. But he says to those who believe in him, those who wish to follow him, I want to give to you the task of bringing flesh to the word of God. I want you to, like an actor, study the words. Memorize the words so that your life can be lived by these words. Not on our own, but in community. No one single one of us can be Jesus. But together we can be the body of Christ in the world. Together we can make the word become flesh once again. All we must do is like any good actor, read the script, read it, examine it, study it, and love Live by it. Become what the script says you are. In a similar way in which an actor becomes the person that they portray in a movie or in a show. Become that person. Be the word. Become flesh. And then the text says, and he lived 
amongst us. And there we, <clears throat> again the translation doesn't help us all that much, because the actual thing that, that John is saying there is he tabernacled among us. Or if you want in a more English, more understandable English word, he tented. He pitched up camp amongst us, taking us back not to the temple, but to the tabernacle that was the, <clears throat> was the dwelling or the, the place where God's presence was made known amongst people during the desert wanderings and in the many early years of their settlement in Canaan, before there was a temple, the tabernacle was the place that made the word of God present amongst the people. Jesus kept among us. I think it's very important that he did not come and build a palace. A big permanent structure. Because if he came to build a palace, a big permanent structure, then we would have to, every now and then, make the, the journey, the pilgrimage, to the place where the Word is made known. But Jesus had a different model. He lived the Word among where people are. He camped among them. He had a temporary, temporary residence amongst people so that he can move free from place to place, letting the word touch people's lives where they are. And that's what he wants from us too. He doesn't want this building to be the church. He wants us, the people, to be the church. He wants us to dwell among others. To be with the community. Not expect the community to come to us but to be with people. It's wonderful for us to gather. It's wonderful for us to be together. It's wonderful for us to have the building. But please do not think this is the church. This is the church. You the church. We are the church. The church is the people who dwell among other people. And we dwell among other people so that they may see and hear the Word of God as we make it real amongst them. Not just the grace. Yes, we must love people. Yes, we must embrace people. Yes, we must accept people. Yes, we must reach out to those who are on the outskirts and those that are lost. We must, we must be gracious. But we must help people hear the truth as well. The truth is that God requires more from us than to stay as we are. God requires more from us than to be a people who continue to live in sin. The truth is, when we live in sin, we need to hear that it's wrong. We need to hear that we need to go and sin no more. God requires more of us than to be comfortable. God requires of us to be useful. To be a people that make a real difference in the world. God's
sends us to tell the truth that we can be so much more than what we are and that society can be so much more than what it is God sends us out to bring his truth so that this world can be the language we often use is turned upside down but I would like to, write, to say that turned right side up so that the world can be right so that things can be the way that God created them to be <coughs> not the way we want them to be but the way the word of God says they should be and so I ask you to use this this illustration this image of the play of the of the script we have our script let us study the word of God let's memorize the word of God make the lines the sentences the, the speaking of God our own words so that we can bring flesh to the word of God just as Jesus brought flesh to the word of God when he was amongst us full of grace and truth Amen, Amen. <clears throat> Right. We're going to now let, let's sing our, our song um, and then we will close the service for the video and continue with communion after that. Okay, so let's sing our closing song. This is a hymn, and when we sing this hymn, realize it's not our musician and our pace of singing it, so adapt our pace to the pace that's on the screen, uh, that's, that's, that's um, over the speakers, um, and just, just enjoy the song, Jesus' name above. Um, no,